George do it. The host of Casa Diablo. Another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If you got a man-sized job in your hands and need confidential help, call on me, George Valentine. Write full details. <laughs> Dear Mr. Valentine, 15 years ago, a grand jury launched an investigation into municipal graft and corruption. It fizzled out because the star witness fled to Mexico. Now this man is willing to return, willing to testify against persons who are still powerful figures in high places. Obviously, the assignment to bring him back requires not only the utmost discretion, but willingness to face all opposition and even violence. Please arrange to see me as quickly as possible. Yours truly, Felix Soper. Tell me, Mr. Loper, what makes this Earl Bixby so eager to come back after all this time? You mean aside from the $10,000 he's asking for in this letter? Well, obviously somebody paid for Bixby's 15-year siesta in sunny Mexico... They're going to extend themselves more than a little to see that he doesn't get back here. Well, the money won't do him much good unless he has pockets in his shroud. And our friend must realize that. Well, maybe I'm reading too much between the lines. But I think he's good and fed up with his self-imposed exile. He can't stand it any longer. Slightly lamb-happy, in other words. (laughs) Yes, precisely, Valentine. Anyway, whatever the reasons for Bixby's change of heart, it suits our purpose to a T. Our purpose? The Citizens Committee, Miss Brooks. It's supposed to act as the uh, city's watchdog. Well, it's been doing an awful lot of barking of late, but no biting where it can do the most good. The village of San Sabo, huh? No wonder nobody's ever found them. So isn't it somewhere near Mount Aldez? Right on the top of it. Bixby's got a big, sprawling place he calls Casa Diablo, just outside of San Sabo. I see. The important thing is to get him back here all in one piece, ready and willing to testify. How soon can you get started, Valentine? (laughs) Well, as soon as Miss Brooks can pick up a Spanish dictionary. After all, a girl should learn how to say no to some of those Mexican perfume vendors. Just the perfume vendors, darling? The others I'll take care of. Muy pronto. you do besides sell perfume and drive that bus out there, Emilio? Si, si, senor. Sometimes I spend the whole day wondering about Americanos. Oh? You are not all in the head sometimes. A remark like that is muy malo for the good neighbor policy. Senorita, I cannot help it. Look, all year I drive almost empty the bus way up to San Sabo where there is nothing to see. Yeah. Now in the worst season, two earthquakes last week. Five passengers, all Americano. Por qué? Oh, I know that one. That means why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you two linguists. Now listen, Emilio. How long does your bus stop here at the end? Senor Emilio's tour is renowned for comfort, for speed, and for politeness. We we'll wait till all passengers complete their meal. Okay. I'll see if I can rustle up some cigarettes. Si, sí, senor. Now, senorita, here is a bottle of slave of flesh. Too bad you had to bring her along, Valentine. Huh? What's that remark supposed to mean? Well, you see, it's like this. You and me are going to have to tangle, Valentine, before we leave San Sabo. Oh, we are? Sure. I hate to see beautiful dames get hurt. My friends tell me I'm soft-hearted. What you got to tell me? That's easy. Just stay out of my way. Or your friends may be talking about you in the past tense. Tough guy. Sort of make it real interesting. I got to see that Bixby stays where he is. Even if a bad accident has to happen to him. He's got accident insurance. That's me. Yeah, I know. I just didn't want us to be in the dark about how we stand. Name's McLean. See, I wonder if your girl's getting lonesome over there with Emilio. Maybe I ought to go find out, huh? You're going to let him get away with that. What's that? Oh. Um, I'm Christine Craig. Yeah, yeah, I heard Emilio talking to you on the bus. Well, it's about time us two Easters got a little chummy, eh? Oh, I usually mind my own business. Guys like that Wolf McLean over there always gives me the creeps. <laughs> Should 
be used to the type by now. Uh, show business? No, oh, nightclubs and what have you. Yeah. Incidentally, what's bringing you to San Sabo? Oh, why talk about me? Now, there's McLean, for instance. Now, he don't uh, care who knows he's got a gun strapped onto him. <laughs> but you're different. You can hardly tell you're wearing a shoulder holster. <laughs> oh, it's really nothing. I just try to be neat. Uh -huh. But tell me something, Christy. Do you happen to know a man named Bixby? Uh, I'll see you out in the bus, Valentine. And you better warn your girl about McLean. <laughs> Who's going to warn him about her? Well, I see that Emilio's passengers have finally decided to become one big happy family. Oh, uh, Red Friend, on the bus I got the impression that you're a newspaper man. Uh-huh. A live syndicate. Well, how about this story? Yes? Five people on a broken down bus headed for a crummy little village miles from nowhere. To quote Emilio, por qué? Well, maybe they're here to see what happens if there's another earthquake in these parts. Which you don't believe, of course, Red Friend. Mm -hmm. It's obvious what McLean is. You can expect anything from him. And this could hardly be a pleasure joint for Christy, the Corrine. That leaves you and Miss Brooks. I was wondering about Don't you. Don't or... forget yourself, Redfern. Or as a reporter, do you consider yourself on the outside looking Something in? Something like that, just waiting for things to happen. And I'm not often disappointed. Come on, I, I think we have time for the last cup of coffee. Sure, thanks. Really, Mr. McClain, you shouldn't have bought me that perfume. It's much too... Well, extravagant. Don't try to thank me, honey. My friends tell me I'm the soul of generosity. Yes, but girls just don't go around letting men buy them expensive perfume. All right, uh, let's put it this way, sweetheart. On the way back, suppose you make the trip with me. Well, yes, but girls just don't go someplace with one man and come back with another. Maybe Valentine won't be coming back. What? You know, he might like it so well for his health up in San Sabo, he might decide to stay. Oh. Come on, let's not talk about him. Where'd you get those big blue eyes, anyway? Oh, oh they just came with my head. What? Oh, no kidding. You got something, babe. Hey, look, you ain't married to that guy, are you? No. Well, uh, how come a sweet package like you is still going around loose? You know, if you don't let go of my hand, I don't see how a girl can be expected to slam a gorilla like you in the nose. Look, no dame kids me along. Oh! Let me give the man back his perfume, Brooksy. George! You don't stay out of this, Valentine. You won't even get up to San Sabo. You should never wind up like that. <laughs> now I know what I got to do with you, Valentine. Bixby or no Bixby. The Emilio Tour again presents itself. A journey of beauty and peace through all Mexico. Now do me the honor to... Madre mia, what happened? A slight detour, Emilio. Now, Mr. McLean will get up off the floor. I think we can proceed. You sleeping, Brooksy? Mm -mm. Who could sleep in this rattle trap? Now, please to observe that we approach the top of Mount Old Days. You will please to extinguish the light over your seats, Senor McLean. Shut up. Head of your driver. Now be reasonable, McLean. These roads are dangerous up here. The light makes it difficult for Emilio to drive. Yeah, you don't mind the dark, Redfern. That's why you made sure you sat down next to that block. Yeah, I've had enough of you on this trip. One more yeah, word. Please. Oh, please. Oh, hey, oh, sister, oh, get, get back in your seat please. and flip down your lip. Hey, George, what kind of a game are we playing here? Game? Well, that's one way of putting it. We want Bixby back. McLean doesn't. What do Redfern and Christy want? I think we'll find that out when they go into action at the custody of... Senor! Another earthquake! What's that, Oh, It's okay now. What are you doing, Emilio? We go back, senorita. Too dangerous up here. We can't go back now. No, we got to go on. Shut up. All here. Leave this to me. But, Senor McLean, feel how the mountain is shaking. Soon we all go down over the yes. side. Start up this bus. Or you get a slug between your eyes. George, Jesus, please. The Emilio, too, is always willing to please, Senor. Don't oh, make me lose my temper. My friends tell me it's the one bad habit I got. Get going. The last stop, senores. Bridge the Arlo. Quick, hurry, please. Emilio, take bus to San Sabo. Nobody's leaving this bus but me. Why do you want to go to Casa Diablo? Crazy Americano lived there for 15 years. 
Earth shake again and little bridge fall. Everybody go down in canyon. McLean, put that gun away. You can't stop us from going to see Bixby. This guy's driving all here to San Sabo. Try to get out, there'll be some dead people out in the road. All right, Redman, pick up his gun. Good shot, Valentine. Let's see, see if he can make some kind of bandage for his wrist. Oh, oh, my boss, my poor automobile. All right, now. Looks like all of us plan to cross this bridge to Casa Diablo. Now, maybe if we had a showdown, some of us would think better of the idea. You heard what Amelia said would happen at the bridge if there was another shake? Bixby ain't coming back to the state. And I'm here to see that he does get back. All right, that accounts for me and McLean. What about you, Christine? I want him back, too. When he ducked out on that investigation, he let my father take the rap for the ones who really had it coming to him. My old man's still in jail. Mm, that leaves just me, doesn't it? I remember a little about that investigation myself. In fact, that's why I'm here. As a reporter, I want to get the facts from Bixby firsthand. Okay. Now everybody knows where he stands. Open the door, Emilio. This isn't a bridge. It's a tightrope. Must be swaying 20 feet in each direction. Well, that's still from the last quake. Yeah. Just hold on to me. Okay. Almost across. Now. Yeah. Say, I think I see someone with a light coming down the hill from the house. Uh, oh. Welcome to Casa Diablo, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, me. Uh, who else but a crazy Americana would bury himself in a place like this? <laughs> Now, let's see. Uh, are we all here? How many did you expect? All those who were invited, of course. Now, who would this be? Take that flashlight out of my face. You made a deal with some people, Bixby. $10,000 and you stayed... Now, I got the dough. What? Well, that's wonderful, the wonderful. Now, this young lady. Christy Craig, you know why I'm here. With 10000 bucks. You be sure. Your father... Now, Redfern, I hope you have the $10,000 for the exclusive story of Earl Bixby, the black sheep. I have. <clears throat> Somehow we seem to have unexpected guests. The young lady and I together, representing the Citizens Committee, with another ten grand. What are you trying to pull, Bixby? You can't sell out four different ways at the same time? Not to get away with it. I have a way. And get away with it, too. Oh, that another yeah, but in the morning, that's what everybody will think, which will serve my purpose. Hey, what are you up to, Bixby? Yeah, you see, I was all prepared for you. I timed the explosion of the bridge from the house. Seeing here alone for 15 years must have dulled your perspective, Bixby. It's five to one against you doing anything. Knowing that, you can afford to satisfy your curiosity. As I said before, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Casa Diablo. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Fifteen years ago, one Earl Bixby time political grafter took it on the lamb rather than testify in a grand jury investigation. After lo these many years, he's willing to return and tell all for a price. You show up in his Mexican hideaway with the $10,000, but three other characters appear with the same amount, each with a different reason. Being like George Valentine, you call for a showdown and fast. All right, Bixby, you know why I'm here. What are you going to do? <clears throat> going to have a drink? You can do that some other time. I've got the $10,000, see? Well, look at it. Now, please, Miss Craig, I'm quite aware that you have the money. You've taken 15 years out of my father's life. Now, you can't do anything about it right now. But you can come back and clear his name. And if you don't, I swear I'll kill you. Take it easy, Christine. <sighs> oh, Valentine, oh, it's, it's too bad you had to take a shot at our friend McLean, so Redfern has to... Bind his wounds now and put him to bed. We might have discussed all this in detail before morning. Now I... <clears throat> I think I'll have that drink. Just be ready in the morning. I'm going to bed. 
You didn't by any chance arrange for the earthquakes, too, Bixby. Oh, that. Yeah, that was merely a stroke of luck. Well, I took advantage of it. Just, uh, just consider the location of Casa Diablo. Please, no geography lessons this time of night. Small and insecure suspension bridge connects this rocky perch with San Sabo. In the morning, when they see it's gone, heh, I can hear the natives saying, Madre mia, the earthquake, crazy mercado, he all alone now. <laughs> Amelia, the bus driver, knows you've had company. Does he... No, all of you didn't uh, go down with the bridge? Oh, so that's it. And presto, $40,000 to invest in your wine cellar. George, I think our host is loco en la cabeza. You know, crazy in the head. I looked it up. <laughs> yeah, Bixby, I think we're going to tie you up until that conference in the morning. Oh, come now, Valentine. Such a groveling admission of weakness. After all, Redfern has McLean's gun and... Uh, I'm sure that you have one. Just the same, I think. <laughs> Would you believe it, Valentine? What, Red? <laughs> McLean, the tough guy who wouldn't hesitate to make cold meat out of anyone else, is afraid of the sight of blood. <laughs> and that was just a scratch on his wrist. You don't say. Hey, Brooksy. Yes, George. Why don't you join Christy? Red friend and I have to decide what to do about Bixby. Okay. I just hope she can play Jim Rummy. Be darned if I'm going to sleep tonight. <clears throat> I don't know what you've got in mind, Valentine, but I've got something to clear up with this gentleman. Come on, Bixby. Pay attention. Yes? You made my syndicate a deal. $10,000 for the exclusive story of what happened 15 years ago. All the names, conniving, the works. When do you begin talking? Ah, oh, you're wasting your time, Redfern. Bixby merely loves to make deals. And he's not even afraid of the political thugs of Semper Lane here. So I suggest we just... Valentine, that's... Yeah. Come on, Redfin. Oh, that, that, that's how I found the George. I... Oh, what? Valentine. Yeah, Christy, we're here. Oh, we've got to do something for her. I'll go out to that fountain in the patio and get some water. You stay right here, Miss Brooks. We don't know what's going on around here. I'll be right back. He... Tell me, Christy. Who was it? Did you see him? Oh. Knife. Oh, no. Oh, George. No, Angel, don't. Someone she couldn't even see. Bixby was with you and Redford. He's got easy. someone else. Someone with a knife. Bixby, I oh, don't just stop it. Stop it. Dear George. How, how is she, Valentine? Did she... Oh. Uh-huh. You don't think it could have been Elaine? Well, you saw how he acted on the bus. He could have been. I doubt it, Redford. Not with his wrist. But I don't understand. I'm going to find Bixby. Before we do that, we'd better get to McLean. No matter what we all think of him, he has a right to know what we're all up against. The same way, Valentine? McLean got it the same way. Yeah, yeah. I was right, George. Bixby's got someone stalking us through the house with a knife. Someone we can't see, but who can see us? Mm. And one of us is next. Unless we get hold of Bixby. If we can find him. Valentine, this is impossible. Bixby dead, too. A state of affairs that seems natural to Casa Diablo. This is just how we left Bixby. Sitting there quietly, he doesn't look as though he's even moved. Someone else has been doing all the moving, Brooks. You know what this means. Somebody wants to see us all dead, whatever his reasons. I doubt if Mr. Loper would be so anxious now for us to bring Bixby back. Well, he certainly sent us on a dilly of an assignment. Well, we can't just stand here and wait. I was saying the same thing to myself. So? Why did you do that? What are you going to do with that gun? Sorry, a weakness in my character. After I trip over my third corpse, I'm inclined to get trigger happy. <laughs> I see you agree with me, Redfern. Uh, of course, you're right, Valentine. I almost forgot I had McLean's gun. Well, what are we going to do, with George? You're coming with me, Brooksy. Redfern, you go through all the rooms in the left wing off the patio. I'll take the right. Okay. I'll meet you back here. 
George Bixby had somebody in this house to see that none of us left here alive. Whoever it is must have turned on him, you know, like Frankenstein turning on his... George, you're not even listening to me. Angel, if there's a grammar school around here, I think I'm going to enroll in the kindergarten. Huh? We're right down to the oldest outdoor sport in the world, but see, the hunter and the hunted. <laughs> Now that age-old game begins. What is it, Redfern? You'd better tell Miss Brooks to stay over there. I'd hate to have her see this thing. It's oh. horrible. You want to write comic books, Buster. Huh? What's that? You know you haven't found anything, Redfern. If I fell for that gag and came over there, you'd do what you would have done before if I hadn't taken a gun out. George! You killed all three of them, Redfern. McLean, when you took him to his room. On the way back, Christie. And when you insisted on getting the water for her, you polished off Bixby. <laughs> when we reached this side of the bridge, Bixby had to ask everybody else who he was. But not you, Redfern. He knew you. You had some kind of a deal cooked up with him. All right, what was it, Redfern? <laughs> Down Brooks. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the confession, Redfern. <laughs> what is what he's going to do, now, George? carefully, Angela. Here, I'll take this yeah, yeah. Stick close to the floor. Okay. Call down to that end. And when you get there, take one shot across the patio toward the sound of his voice. What voice? Don't worry, you'll be hearing from him. Now get moving and stay down. Yeah, George. Hey, Redford. Why don't you come on over and get us? What's the hurry? Why should I fumble around in the dark? I'll get both of you when I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> you don't stand a chance. I know every inch of this place. I'll always be one step ahead of you. Don't you have anything to say to that? You're just wasting bullets, Valentine. You can't see where I am. You know, I wish I were a reporter. What a yarn. Missing politician hires broken down newspaper man to pose as master of Casa Diablo. As fortunes dwindle, Earl Bixby involves, evolves ingenious scheme to continue life of high revelry in Mexico City. Ah, too bad it has to be a story that can never be told. <laughs> That was the deal Bixby cooked up, Valentine. Do you hear me? You don't have to raise your voice, friend. What? Stop it! You should have kept it simple, Buster. It might have worked. But I suppose being on the lam for 15 years does weird things to a man's mind. Doesn't it, Bixby? the goodness to observe the moon as she sits herself on top of Mount Valdez. Muy romantico. Muy simpatico. Muy... Emilio, you sound like a fugitive from Mexico's Tin Pan Alley. <laughs> <laughs> Mil gracias, senorita. <laughs> hey, the first chance we get, Brooksy, we'd better wire Loper and tell him that if the Citizens Committee wants any testimony from Bixby, they'll have to send somebody down here to the San Sabo jail. Well, what do we say? Bixby unavoidably detained. Light case of murder? <laughs> Something to that effect. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, Don. It's hard to believe everything that's happened. Well, in a way, Bixby lived up to his end of the bargain. For 15 grand, he agreed to live out his life modestly and obscurely somewhere in Mexico. He did. Even if he had to hire that poor dope to take his place. I think he actually expected to get away with it. Mass slaughter. Well, to his mind, it seems simple enough. After he explained to the simple natives of San Sabo that his visitors went down into the chasm with the bridge, well, he just passed himself off as the crazy Americano whom they hardly ever saw. Yeah. Um, Emilio? Si, senorita. Well, shouldn't we turn this light off? You know, to make it easier for you driving at night, remember? Oh, no, senorita. I can see quite well. Emilio's tour considers only the comfort of its passengers. Yeah, they were much more comfortable in the dark. But it was not necessary to do that, senorita. I insist Emilio, that I... how do you say shut up in Spanish? <laughs> Por favor. You of all people should understand, remember? Muy romantico, muy simpatico. Mm. 
<laughs> Muy terrifico. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Baker and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Victor Rodman as Bixby, Ted Von Elts as Redfern, Gigi Pearson as Christine, Ken Harvey as McLean, Stan Farrar as Loper, and Tony Barrett as Emilio. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.